People of the Capital Wasteland, it is I, Razador Midlothian Odyssey, here for you with another fun run of Fallout 3 Faction Warriors. Been pretty pumped for this run because, like, who doesn't enjoy the Enclave? The Enclave Soldier is a powerful unit in this game, but can this powerhouse make up for its slow movement speed thanks power armor with how hard it hits? Well, in my experiences doing these runs, the final score of a power armor wielding unit seems to suffer due to the movement penalty, but hey, maybe I'll be proven wrong. On screen now is everything we have access to this run, and in order to gain access to the power armor straight away, I entered a console command in addition to what I normally do to get the weapons and apparel. Gotta say, it's pretty sweet starting the challenge off with Enclave power armor. I always really like the design of it. Haven't used a flamer yet in this series, that's gonna be fun. We're pretty decked out, so I expect that will breeze through the earlier parts of the game, but Vault 87 usually has some surprises in store for us. As mentioned above, it's our movement speed thanks to our armor's weight class that's going to be a consistent obstacle. But we have completed many runs, and our running has gotten more efficient, so who knows? Either way, I'm pretty excited. And here's the special allocation I went with for our Enclave Soldier Faction Warrior. 8 Strength, 1 Perception, which we always dump. 6 Endurance, 10 Charisma, just to max out Speech and Bypass Autumn. 9 Intelligence, because we can make that 10 when we get to Dr. Lee's Lab. 5 Agility, and 1 Luck. I figure we'll need a high strength for carrying capacity, plus it'll help a little bit with Ripper damage. And speaking of Dr. Lee's Lab and the Intelligence Bobblehead, I think we're gonna hold off going in there early. I mean, we'll get Rivet City on our fast travel like always, so we can warp there after we rescue James from 112. But I'm curious to see if skipping out on extra skill points early is worth it. We are trying to go fast after all, so this might be the right call. Oh, and for those of you who are new, first off, welcome, and I hope you stay a while and listen. Just know that here in Faction Warriors, the goal is to beat the game with as few battles as possible, and the units we're running are competing with each other for the lowest time. Most of the runs here on this channel involve us being character in some way, be it a grunt unit like our FNV Regulator run, or our Fallout 3 NCR Trooper run, or if we play as the characters themselves like Butch Delory in both games, or Raul Tejada in Fallout 3. And because I did load a previous save to skip over everything in Vault 101, I am going to cut that time from our finale. I'll have a screenshot of it for you guys right at the end. And as I'm sure you've ascertained by now, we use the weapons and apparel I showed earlier. I know the Enclave soldiers actually have a lot more than what was on screen before, because we can see them rock out with stuff like Gatling lasers and missile launchers, but we're just gonna go with what I grabbed from the wiki. Trust me, we have more than enough firepower to go around. After that Faction Warriors Tunnel Snakes run, I'm ready for some catharsis. And as we make our way to good old JMM, a key location for us to make use of fast travel later on, I just want to say something real fast here. Thank y'all so much for the support on this run. I legit had no idea this video would take off the way it did. I had the idea for that run in my head for a while, and it sounded fun, so I ran it. Just goes to show that you never know. It's always the videos you don't, uh, not have low expectations for, I wouldn't say. Because I enjoy all my runs, and having fun is key. But yeah, it just kind of surprised me. Because for a while now, my FNV Chinese Remnant Faction Warriors run, which you should totally check out if you haven't yet, was the uncontested champion on traction, watch time, new subscribers, and that video has been aptly replaced. Still very proud of that run, though. It was very fun. Oh, and as we make our way through Jefferson Memorial here, gonna say I was, um... I am liking the damage that we're dealing, and real quick about that turret, you can just skip over it, because once you come back with the scientist, that turret's just gone. Uh, but I haven't used the flamer in quite a while, so I decided to test it out, and I was completely blown away with how fast the super mutant dropped. I mean, I know that it's great against light armored units, but it's just nice to see super mutants drop like that. Making our way inside of the rotunda here, I was pretty mind blown by this as well, because this has to be the fastest battle in the rotunda I have had. Now, we didn't have a super mutant Bruton here, otherwise it would have been a little bit faster, but still, just awesome. And speaking of Fallout, as we're playing Fallout 3 together, I am going through 2 again since I, down the road, want to do a let's play of that, and I decided to roll with a close quarters combatant with a side order of Thievery, and oh my god, it's way harder than when I played the first time. Usually it doesn't work that way, but I mean, it's Fallout 2, the game is super hard from the get-go. I ended up making a beeline for Vault City and immediately got Cassidy, though it took me quite a while and I was dying constantly in random encounters for 35 minutes. 
Worth it though, my man Cassidy. I did enjoy his Fallout 3 and Point Lookout run. And I had to look this up because I wasn't sure because this particular character just irks me, but man, I am so glad to know that Lynette is universally despised. I think that's one challenge run I just would not do because it would be impossible because she would piss off everyone and end up shanked and thrown into a dumpster, probably in Freeside. She's a Karen before Karens existed, or if Karen was the manager. Last but certainly not least, sorry for taking two weeks for a new upload. I've been so busy with other stuff, as well as another project, non-YouTube related, but things should be getting back on track right about now. I think within the next day or two, I'm going to wrap up the remaining Faction Warriors runs here on Fallout 3. That way I have a bit more of a backlog. Okay, so all that mumbo jumbo aside, let's get back into it because, man, I love that flamer and I am pretty sad because finding flamer ammo this early on is pretty difficult. Having gotten that fast travel point for Smith Casey's garage, next up we are going to head on up to good old Lamplight of Little. Now, there's been one, maybe two runs, I, I forget which, where the super mutants haven't been attacking the Brahmin, or I know one run there was only one of them that was attacking. Not this time, and that's okay because, well, we're trying to avoid battles, but this is, I think, a scripted encounter, so don't mind it. Also, don't mind a little bit more XP. Now, what we can do here is be real insidious and run away and let the Brahmin draw the aggro of that super mutant who's firing at us. And hey, I figure the Brahmas want some revenge. All we have to do is gain some distance here, and once we're in caution, we'll be able to fast travel once we loot that little shack outside of the caves, and luckily for us, we are in caution now, so time for my grubby little fingers to go to work. Next up is the always obligatory mention of Tranquility Lane here. Oh, and real quick, in addition to being busy and working on other project stuff, I was also sick. I caught food poisoning, I was down for a couple days, and I caught a nasty tummy bug. I was down for a couple of days. But despite that, I still try to be productive because I hate sitting around and being idle. I've always been that way. But anyway, back to the run here as we go inside. Funny enough, you'll see me actually go slow here with trying to get the password because I usually have a sticky note on my little laptop while I'm recording. Well, I cleaned my room and I accidentally threw my sticky note away while I was at it. So I guess it's good that I... I kept my room clean, but uh, <laughs> I threw away my passcode. I'm lucky that I remembered it. All said and done there, we can skip over everything with James because we don't care about that here in Faction Warriors. Back on over to good old JMM for round one against the Enclave here. It's Enclave Soldier against Enclave Soldier. How's it gonna go? I'm thinking we're gonna do okay because the plasma rifle is really awesome. I believe the two that you fight here have laser rifles, and yeah, it's already good night, Irene, for that fella. Good thing about these guys in this run is that the microfusion cell ammunition helps us out because that keeps us resupplied. And as we get ready to battle the second Enclave Goon, I'm actually going to show the rotunda this time because... <laughs> oh man, y you guys are not ready for this. I mean, we, we know how Bethesda games can be, right? Well... As we make our way inside, ascend the stairs, all that good stuff, just, just observe. I, I just want you to take this in. Imagine if this was your first time playing the game. It's so good, I actually wasted about 15 seconds here just kind of staring at it in awe because I wanted some footage for it, right? If I lose first place, it's going to be because of this, but let's move on here. One thing you can do is you can pickpocket Colonel Autumn, and if you fail, which we will because our sneak skill's terrible... Autumn will go ahead and shoot that scientist and accelerate the timing of this event. That's great for Faction Warriors. Thank you, Colonel Autumn, for being an absolute bro of a team player. And honestly, not much to say about Taft Tunnels. We didn't even fight a single Feral Ghoul Roamer. That's rare, and I'm very much okay with that. So let's go back to Lamplight. We're going to access the terminal, courtesy of our little pal Joseph. He gets the terminal unlocked for us, and we finish with our little Hexor's magic. And as we enter Vault 87, I'm thinking that's not the only thing that Joseph must have jury-rigged for us, because as we open the safe, which thankfully we have 50 lockpick, we had that for another reason, we open up the safe and there's two stealth boys, so you know what that means? Thanks to R and Jesus Coon, we don't have to backtrack to that final room of Murder Pass. We could just advance forward if I can get in the right direction here. Turn around, there we go. First order of business here is to use our Ripper to chop up some rad roaches. And there is no way in Heffel we are sneaking on these guys, but thankfully we dropped the first super mutant real fast with our plasma rifle. 
Not even a powerful super mutant brute can stand up to the might of the Enclave, God bless us. We have one more to dispose of, just a basic super mutant goes down real fast, so it's on to the next corridor. Now, as we open the door, I go into vats just to get a lock on getting to position here, and unfortunately, I do miss. Our energy weapon skill's very low. This will waste a couple seconds, but not much of a problem. It's just a super mutant brute with a sledgehammer, so we can take him down lickety-split. And I'll tell you what, I was really surprised that when we went to sneak, we went from caution to hit. We're wearing power armor. We do gotta be careful with our plasma rifle ammunition, however, as we take down that super mutant. The one who was on the walkway, the one that we normally try to snipe or draw to us, comes at us, but he brought a nail board to a plasma rifle fight. And as a super mutant, can't say I'm surprised by that. So what we're gonna do is undo our armor and use the first of our three stealth boys to bypass some encounters here. Sometimes I go for the little locked door on the west side and then I go for the safe, but not this time. We're just gonna beeline straight for Fox. Now I like to get him because it doesn't hurt to have an extra set of hands and companions are not banned from these runs because I mean we have Sarah Lyons at the end helping us so I mean ain't gonna hurt anything. However, here in Faction Warriors, because we are trying to go fast, we can get it to where we can get Fox to move faster by having him aggro super mutants. Not only that, but once we get to where the Gek is, we are going to go get it ourselves, because Fox takes a hot minute to go get it, and we don't have time to wait around for that. With the combined might of our Enclave Soldier and Fox, we can get to where the Gek Chamber is pretty fast. Though I am curious if there is a unit who can possibly go through here without getting Fox's help. Well, we're about halfway through the series, so we still got time to find out. And I'm gonna go ahead and show us getting the Gek just to show that, you know, I said we get the Gek ourselves. Gonna go do it. Now, I found out something pretty interesting. I noticed this little detail in the last Faction Warriors run I did. Where, if you activate the little cylinder with the Gek, and then you back up to where the doors open, you don't take any radiation. I have no earthly idea why that exists, but I'm pretty happy that it does, so let's go over to Raven Rock, shall we? As we get some fat loot from those Enclave Foot Lockers, and the Lockers, we're gonna go ahead and go in there, and Autumn wants to take us out, but, well, he doesn't know that we have Stealth Boys. He probably should have appropriated that from us. And as I was going through here, I was thinking, since we always go to Colonel Autumn's little quarters, we actually have use for the energy weapons bobblehead this time because our main firepower comes from energy weapons and what better way to boost our damage than to grab that sweet bobblehead right there. And when you're going through here, make sure that you get the first aid box that's real well hidden on top of the left locker there. Speaking of hidden, I know viewers who, want, who have been here for a while know what's about to happen, but again, if you're new... The main reason why I come here is to break into Kurt Alotum's Foot Locker. You need a 50 lock pick to get that. I always make sure that I have 50 lock pick and 50 science before I get to Vault 87. Uh, the Foot Locker's got some pretty sweet goodies in there, but the thing that we really want is the Zax Destruct Sequence Hollow Tape. Now you have to play it to get the code. It gives you a new dialogue option and set of dialogue options to go after that when you talk to President Eden. So if you want to do away with Eden in a way that feels organic with the narrative, that's the way to go about it. And as we bat our, our way out of here, of course we're going to be looting the Enclave soldiers, at least partially, because microfusion cells are always nice to have in our arsenal. Energy cells? Yeah, sure, maybe we will use the laser pistol again at some point. And unfortunately, our repair skill is nowhere near high enough to repair our power armor, which honestly hasn't taken that much damage. Anyway, the headpiece has a bit. But not, a, not the rest of our suit. Next up is the final battle. Just know that I skip over Liberty Prime because it doesn't contribute anything to the run. So, without further ado, back to J-Mem for the finale. Round 2 against the Enclave. Let's do it. Now, I'm feeling pretty confident considering that we've been bulldozing everything here. We have Fox and Sarah Lyons with us, which also helps. Always is nice, but uh... <laughs> When I go for the uh, zoom in on the Enclave Soldier, I miss. I, I guess I have the aim of a Stormtrooper this time around. And as if our character felt secondhand embarrassment from that and just went into some kind of uh, berserker rage, man, the absolute beatdown we lay on the Enclave here in Jefferson Memorial, this is the fastest we've had so far. I'm sure that doesn't surprise you to hear because so this is the strongest unit we played as so far. Followed very closely by the Talon, bro. It's just pure, utter catharsis, and I'm indulging in it. Our speech is maxed out, our charisma is maxed out, and we have good karma, so we are able to successfully talk down Colonel Autumn, and 
The run's pretty much over from here. All we have to do is enter in the code. And I did say near the start of the run that I had a screenshot of the time it took us to get outside of Vault 101 and actually starting the game. Screenshot's right here, and because it's so close to 24 minutes, I just round up to it. Makes my life easier. I personally end the timer right before I enter the 216 code into the Project Purity Terminal. But yeah, that was Fallout 3 Faction Warriors as an Enclave Soldier. I really hope you guys enjoyed that run. And I hope you enjoyed being that powerful, because next run we're gonna be in a bit of a downgrade on that note. And you'll see who's next once we have the preview list of our upcoming runs, and... Outside of Faction Warriors for Fallout 3, our next Fallout 3 run is X688, but our next Faction Warrior here in Fallout 3 is the Oasis Tree Minder. Basically druids with guns, and that is just awesome. Thank you guys as always for watching, hope you enjoyed the run, and I will see you, my dear friends, at the next run in the Capital Wasteland. Later.